Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I hope that your day is off to a beautiful start. Our main card for today is karmic relationships. And the beautiful thing about this is we are going straight into our Aries. I believe it's Aries full moon is happening tomorrow. And this card of karmic relationships was one of the main energies that I brought forth in the channeling that I did on YouTube. And this is a very, <clears throat> a very dominant energy right now that we are being called to look at. I am getting the sense, and I've been getting this message actually for quite some time now, that a lot of our karmic relationships are coming to a close. And not just coming to a close in this sort of um, divine timing way, although that's definitely a part of it. They're coming to a close in this very final, we have learned the lesson kind of way. So it's not just that the relationships are closing, it's that we are closing out old chapters that those relationships were meant to teach us about and represent. Now, as, uh, as we close these chapters, there can be a little bit of difficulty, uh, um, definitely a lot of emotions, a lot of old emotions from the past arising to the surface, things that need to be processed in the context of these relationships. There were two archetypes from the tarot that came forth to assist us with this. The first is an archetype I know all too well, the Queen of Swords. <laughs> she is very cerebral, she's very analytical. The Queen specifically, rather than the King of Swords, the Queen kind of goes into more of an isolation type of energy. Uh, you can see in this depiction she is up on a mountainside all by herself, kind of striking that classic thinking pose and contemplating things. And so this is the first archetype that is coming forth to really assist us with the closing of these karmic relationships that it's um, in our best interest to ask those deeper questions of ourselves. Why am I feeling this way? What was this relationship meant to teach us? Also, I'm being reminded now, thank you, pay attention to your dreams. Um, for many of us, these closing of, closings of karmic relationships may have already happened. However, those people may visit you in dream time. And so the directive here, the advice here is to ask those deeper questions. What was I meant to learn in this relationship dynamic? And also a quick point, <clears throat> Karmic relationships, although they can be romantic, they definitely do not need to be. In fact, most of the karmic relationships that you have in your life will be completely platonic. They may be coworkers, family members, friends. Um, so it's, it's really all types of relationships that we're looking at here. But there is absolutely, it is in our best interest to analyze things, ask those deeper questions, and pay attention to what comes through, especially from the subconscious. One of the strengths of the Queen of Swords is that she has a very good relationship with her subconscious mind. She does not enter into these questions from a place of judgment and criticism. It is from a place of pure curiosity that she asks these questions. The second archetype that I got for this is the High Priestess. So there's the mental component with the Queen of Swords, and then there is the spiritual and energetic component with the High Priestess. As we close out these karmic relationships, there's tons of analysis that will be beneficial, but there is also a need to energetically purge out the old. Um, I cut my hair. It's kind of a little too short. I don't know how I feel about it. But anyway, um, <clears throat> releasing things like physical things that cords that need to be cut. Uh, a really great crystal for this, by the way, in case you were curious, is selenite. Selenite is fantastic for cutting old cords. Uh, you can actually hold a piece of selenite over your heart space and kind of wave it up and down and imagine those cords around your heart space being cut, especially any cords from your heart space that are going to old karmic relationships that you have an intuitive sense are coming to a close. So there is a energetic component to this as well. And the interesting thing is you would think these two archetypes are maybe a little bit combative with one another because Queen of Swords is very mental, cerebral, fact-based and uh high priestess is very woo woo very witchy very energetic can't be seen i can't see it but i know it the interesting thing about this time of year and this season of collective ascension that we are currently in is we're learning how to balance these two archetypes and how to create a dynamic where both of these two archetypes can work together in harmony and so one of the best ways to do this in case you're struggling with this is to pay attention to any mental chatter of shame and judgment. The inner critic is potentially one of the biggest barriers for getting these two archetypes to play nicely. The other two cards that I got to end this message here is breakthrough. You are more. So 
if we utilize the energies of especially tomorrow's full moon and just the energies of today in general in a beneficial way, we ask those deeper questions, we do that energetic healing and purging, we will have many breakthroughs. And those breakthroughs will lead to the realization that you are more. You are more than just this incarnation cycle. There is something ancient and primordial to you that you are able to reconnect to, especially right now. All right, guys, I will leave it here for today. I hope this was helpful and I will see you back here tomorrow.